had a bunch of buddies in the mortgage industry that were saying, Matt, you've got a big network. Just come join us and, and do mortgage. I said, okay. And literally like it was at a kid's birthday party sitting by the pool where I was like, all right. Buckle up. It's the insurance dudes podcast. Boom. Something. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we should have just went into the boom. That's what boom. We- boom. All right. Boom. <laughs> nice. We got a boom out of our guest, Matt Gouget. And I actually yeah, said it good. correctly in the green room there. So awesome. Well, welcome to the insurance dudes. We love it when we have a mortgage dude on the insurance dudes, because I think you guys hold the keys to the kingdom in some cases. Right. And sometimes you guys hold the keys to the kingdom and you guys are are a vital piece of it. So it's, it's great being here. Yeah. It's a really good We're going to dive into that. That is the, that is what are the benefits on both sides? And we'll get into that. Craig, do you have some questions, perhaps? I do. We'd like to open with a little bit of the speed breakers. So if you are ready, Matt, these Rapid are to be answered quick. Questions. These are to not even think about it. You just go. Are you ready? Yes, I don't, I don't get ready, buddy. I stay ready. All right, perfect. Oh, have you ever had a mullet? Love it. No. First crush. Kelly Gregson. <laughs> perfect. Most nice. embarrassing thing your mom ever caught you doing? Pee in the bed. Oh, nice. Uh, fastest speed ever the, driven. On the VCR. I'm taking that one back. I peed on the VCR before. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they deserve. You need, yeah. Sleepwalking. Fast, fast, fastest speed ever driven. Mid 80s. Favorite cereal. What? Favorite cereal. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a safe dude. Favorite cereal is Raisin Nut Brands. Not even close. Everybody's going after you now to get you as a client for their insurance agency. How many kids? Two. Have you made cry? Please wait for the entire question. <laughs> At least 30. I've, I've coached some little league teams. And Perfect. So, yeah, I've made, I've made dozens of kids cry. Count Chocula or Count Dracula? Count Dracula. Have you ever jumped out of an airplane? Yes. Ooh, parachute or no parachute? Parachute. The smart. Uh, best dinosaur. <laughs> What's, what was that best dinosaur? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, that's, that's the go-to. Um, dogs or cats? There's only one answer for this. That's correct. Dogs is not even close. That is correct. <laughs> Tacos or burritos? Ooh, I like them both. I'll go burritos. Burritos. To, yeah, it's kind of like depends on the day for me. And everybody's favorite question, Trump or Biden? <laughs> this is a real question. You don't have to answer that. That's okay. You as a salesperson, as a salesperson, I plead the fifth. I want, I want business. <laughs> I love it. So Matt, what was the first concert you ever went to? And then we'll dive in. I want to say it Go was, it back. was probably Papa Roach. Oh, Papa Roach is like from like 30 minutes down the street. And uh, it was an era where I did like Papa Roach and Deaf Tones and Rage Against the yes. Machine. And I think Papa Roach was first. I don't even know Papa Roach. Oh, great band, man. I do know the, the other the Fohawk. The originators of the Fohawk. Really? I thought that was Fohawk. on um, <laughs> uh, American Idol. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, cool. Let's go back from the the old Papa and what brought you into the mortgage industry. How did you get there? Let's take. Yeah, that I mean, I probably I probably didn't arrive like like a lot of other folks, but I've always been into numbers. I've always liked people. I got a finance degree in college, but then after college, I went and ended up managing a small business. I managed a poker room, and so from oh, 05 wow. to 2014, I was managing a, a small mom and pop poker room in Sacramento, having a great time. But then I think probably towards the end of it, I realized that this isn't something I'm going to do for the next 50 years and had a bunch of buddies in the mortgage industry that were saying, Matt, you've got a big network. You're, you know, great with people. You got a finance degree. So, you know, numbers and that stuff, you should get into mortgage. You should come join us and and do mortgage. Said, okay. And literally like it was at a kid's birthday party sitting by the pool where I was like, all right, I'll uh, go 100% commission. Just had my second kids. Seems like a good enough yeah, idea, great right? idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I had basically no other options but to succeed in mortgage. And so uh-huh. during those first few years, I've done a lot of like coaching in over these past year or two. And I kind of have thought back to like 2014, 2015, when I had to go to like every single networking meeting, had to meet as many people as I could so I could grow this business. And 
it's crazy that it's only really like seven or eight years because it feels like I've been in mortgage for four decades. Uh huh. Well, because those first couple of years were like two decades of work, right? Yeah, I think I did enough work in those first three years. Yeah, to like span two decades. Yeah. The front end of the career, the career funnel, if you will, is pretty similar in insurance uh, and mortgage in that you have to jam a whole lot of contacts in all in the beginning, right? So it was networking events. Yeah, um, a lot of networking events, a lot of, you know, going back to that network that I think I'd built in the card room, you know, because the card room is a place where everybody came, you know, there was plumbers and there was engineers and there was Congress folks and there was pimps and prostitutes. I used to tell people it's like Congress people and pimps and prostitutes and everything in between was kind of like the clientele of a, <laughs> of a car room. So, uh -huh. um, you know, the same type of people that need insurance, the same type of people that need home loan to buy a house are right. the folks that were there. So, you know, between that network, the network that I built through, like, I'm not joking when I say I went to two or three networking meetings a week. So in those first two years, that might've been three or 400 different meetings I just tried wow. to meet everybody and, uh -huh. and tried to let them know that I was taking a, the mortgage profession seriously. I was going to take good care of anybody they referred over. And you do that enough, you get a few deals. Then after you get a few deals, you do a few deals, you get pretty good at it. And, you know, here we are, you know, seven or eight short years later, we're going to fund something like $120 million in wow. loans this year. And uh, so I feel like we're doing, we're doing a pretty good job. That's like five houses in California. <laughs> It'll be about 300 loans, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. The $100 million mark for some folks that I know that are in Ohio or in other parts of the country, they're like, man, I would have to do 1,700 units to fund $100 million. That's crazy. Like, well, I'll do less than 300 and I'll get to $100 million. Yeah, there you go. That's super cool, man. And obviously, you're leveraging your team to do this, right? Right. Take us through sure. building that team how difficult that was. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I'm in this season in my business now where it's a lot of fun because most of the growth that I've seen and most of the growth that I'll continue to see is leveraging people, training, empowering, and, and seeing people on my team grow rather than just me, right? Because insurance world, mortgage world, you can only quote so many insurance quotes. You can only go through so many mortgage scenarios. You're one person. And so to do the amount of business we're doing, it takes people. And really 2018, when I went from direct lending to becoming a broker is where I really started to grow and embrace the, I'm not going to do everything anymore mentality. And Laura, who's been my production manager since 2018 was the first. And then underneath her added somebody to help with front end support added another person to help with processing, added somebody else to help with the lead management and taking applications. And so now, now we're a team of five, five or six really here in California. Since making the switch to U Mortgage, which I don't know if you can see my sign. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a recent switch. Now I've also got some of the folks out in Philadelphia, out at headquarters who are helping out with that. And so it's really a team effort. And to close 300 loans, you got to talk to, I don't know, 3,000 people, take 1,200 applications. And it's a lot of numbers and it's a lot of people. And my fear always as I was growing this thing was I've built a really good reputation and I've like blood, sweat and tears, all those networking meetings we talked about. Right. Uh, I don't want to screw that up, right? Like it's the only thing that keeps me up at night is growing too big, too fast to where the reputation suffers. And it goes from like, oh, talk to Matt and his team. They're great. They'll take good care of you to, yeah, they're good, but they grew too fast. And it takes them two and a half days to get back to you. Like, that's my biggest fear. So it's still a work in progress, but it's, uh -huh. been, it's been fun because, um, you know, now I talk to folks, whether it's insurance or mortgage or real estate or really any business, and it's all kind of the same stuff, right? You've got sales in the front, you've got fulfillment in the back, and you've got managing the people and the processes that do those things. And that's where I'm at now is more of uh, running a business than I am, quote unquote, mortgage guy. I'm not pulling credit and analyzing income and, and doing some of the in the trenches work. Right. Um, I'm able to kind of just manage it 
from a high level and it's fun. I'm having more fun than I've ever had. And like just to wrap it all up is now that I have all that kind of handled, now I can really lean into what the passion is, which is educating folks. And like that's Uh what my YouTube channel is, is just hit 500 uploads because I'm trying to get as much good information out there as possible to maybe offset all this crap that's out there. I get calls every single day from call centers where guys don't know their ass from their elbow and they're trying to give me like, get me to refinance or whatever the heck the goal is. And so to kind of offset that, trying to give people good, honest mortgage advice at scale and, uh, you know, YouTube and the internet's a great way to do that. Oh, absolutely. Is it Matt the Mortgage Guy? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to YouTube, it's just Matt the Mortgage Guy and 500 uploads and closing in on 10,000 subscribers. And it's been fun. I've, I've actually leaned into that now that I've got, you know, a lot of the business stuff handled and the day-to-day operations can be handled by the team. That's the thing I really enjoy doing. Yeah. the mar- there, There's nothing more um, that can drive more revenue and that's more valuable than that marketing piece of a business. And it sounds like you really, really ran with the YouTube. Why don't you take us through that? Because I know that a lot of insurance agent, other loan officers could definitely benefit from looking at that. Cause I know that in the beginning, when you put a camera in front of yourself, it's very <laughs> difficult, right? It's very oh, difficult man. to say something and actually like, you know what you want to say, then the phone turns on and you're like, Bleh. and I think that's important just to get going, but walk us through you starting that the time frame it took and, and what you did to get to those 10,000 subscribers. Cause that's, that's very impressive to grab 10,000. Yeah. And I think like the main thing is probably consistency, right? It's uh-huh. like more often than not, somebody's going to, you know, get 13 videos in and be like, all right, I tried that. You know, that was <laughs> right. six months and, and I'm done. But from the very start, I did it with pure intentions where I, I wasn't even worried about business. And I wasn't worried about that from the start. I just knew as a new loan officer, when you learn something, if you teach somebody else that same thing, it's going to kind of what do they say when you teach one person you're teaching two or something? That was one way that I was going to help myself learn about mortgage, learn about oh, how escrow accounts work, yep. know it good enough to speak it on a camera. Now I know it better and I can not only put it out. It's funny to talk about at scale on YouTube. The, when I was first putting out videos, nine people were watching it, right? It was like right. mom, dad, cousin, and <laughs> right. you know, three people in my office. But I think I started YouTube almost from the very start. And that was the thing is like, I want to help educate folks. I want to help educate myself. And by putting out a video, I'll accomplish both of those things. I never, I haven't taken any videos down. If you go back and look at those first ones, they are absolutely terrible. Like, yep. and, and I want to keep them up to provide inspiration to people. Like, I don't want to start yet. I'm like, trust me, it's going it to be better than the stuff that I was putting out. Cause right. my, the audio is terrible. The content was halfway decent. You know, the video quality was terrible. And so 2014, the only deal I made with myself was like, I'm going to make a video once a week and I'm going to do a mortgage Monday every week. And when I was doing it back then, I was editing it myself and I was doing everything with distributing it myself. And so like that probably took me four or five hours a week to like sit down for an hour, figure out what I want to say, read a couple articles, some quick notes, record the thing, might take a few takes and then figure out an iMovie how to plug an intro in, how to plug the outro in, all that stuff, right? But I did it for like two straight years. And then even once a week for two years, you've got a hundred videos. And yep, right. I saw all these cool like benefits of it. I was learning as I was doing the videos. Clients would ask the same questions. Real estate agents and other referral partners would have the same questions. And I'd say, oh, by the way, I made a video on that. And I'd just be able to, to fire that stuff out. And now think about today, I've got 500. Yeah. My staff can go, oh, you want to know about recast? Oh, you want to know about, you know, writing contingent offers? Oh, you want to like, I'm trying to put a video on everything, you know? And then when I get to a thousand or 1500, 90% of questions are going to be in a library to be able to share with folks because, you know, you talked about it being a great thing for sales. Like I talk to my team all the time. We're providing education. And like when we deliver that, the product that we have, the product that we're quote unquote selling, like sells itself, right? Because people uh-huh. like us and trust us and they come to us for the education. And then they're like, all right, well, I'd like to get started. I want to get pre-qualified or I'd like to refinance. And so it was like a lot of things I do. 
put it out there, find out what I can do better and tweak it a little bit. And over time, you know, six to seven years later, I think my video is probably a little better. I've scaled and, and have the money and resources to have somebody else doing the editing. I can just drop something in a Dropbox folder. And, and now we're up to three videos a week. And then on Mondays, I'm doing a YouTube live. And that's another thing that I've just been enjoying the heck out of. Um, yeah. Some people are like, why do you do it? For a home buyer who's a follower of my channel or anybody else that's looking for mortgage information, it's one thing to say like, hey, Matt, and leave a comment on a video and then I'll respond to it 48 hours later and they think of something else and they another comment. But like live interaction with a mortgage broker who's got enough business, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. Like I don't need any more business. I can just give you honest feedback. You know, this is what that part of the loan estimate means. Here's where you might be a little bit misguided on what this person's telling you about this refinance, whatever the case may be. Like it's just an awesome way to be able to like provide value and education to people. And so that's every Monday at 6 PM on the YouTube channel. And I've been having tons of fun with that too. Oh, that's awesome. I would love to stay on that topic all conversation, but <laughs> I do want to move to something else that you said earlier, which was you were in this growth phase and now you you're at this super happy spot in your business where you're able to kind of do the stuff like YouTube and like even what you're saying with YouTube. Tons of hours invested in the beginning, and now it's grown. Now you're having fun with it in the sense where you can go live and you got a lot of people to talk to. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's really cool to see. Mike, it's funny how it parallels with insurance agencies because, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll start an agency and we can kind of just keep it going. And we're constantly our own employee just every day. And in order to get out of that, you have to have that growth mode where you're hammering, you're hammering leads, um, if it's leads or if it's networking, whatever it is that you're bringing people into the agency or uh, mortgage office, like whatever you're doing to build the new clients, you're at this incredible growth phase where you're investing incredible amounts of time, money, reinvesting any money that you make back into it to get to the spot that not a lot of people get to because they kind of pitter out. But like, if you can dive deep in and get over the hump, you can do what you're doing, where you're taking a ton of time to be able to do other things, bringing in business, and you're having a blast. It's right. crazy how those things parallel between mortgage insurance. I just want to bring that up because I think a lot of people out there listening sometimes feel like they're on that hamster wheel. And I'm sure you felt like that at the very beginning. I know I did. Where right. you're on this right. hamster wheel. It's like, ah, oh, it's like you're your own employee. It's like, get over the, you got to put in the time to get over that. You know? Right. Well, that's the thing too, is like, like you talked about, there's so much work that goes into it, whether it's insurance or mortgage. Like when you're doing every single piece it's inevitable mm -hmm. that you don't like it all. You don't enjoy every single piece right. of it. And so like some of these mortgage coaching groups I'm in, I'm telling these folks, like if you feel burnt out, it's because you're doing stuff you don't enjoy. Yeah. Imagine how right. re-energized you'd feel if you said, I don't like to chase page eight of the bank statement. I don't like to chase loan, like letters of explanation. I love to talk to people, strategize and put together a game plan and show them this option versus that and give them high level advising but I don't like the minutia, hire someone to do the minutia. There's somebody who's really good at it and they probably enjoy it. And if you treat them right and pay them good, they'll probably thrive in that position and have a good time. Your client gets a better experience because they're more excited about that piece of it. And then you're able to step back and do your job at a higher level. Everybody wins. Like you grow 100%. more, you make more, the client receives a better experience. Like, and that's one thing that all the, every industry has got to be similar to mortgage. And in that, like people think that Matt, the mortgage guy needs to be the guy that does every single piece of the business. When in actuality, like that would hurt me if I wasn't able to step out and say, this person does this piece, this person does that piece. And then you get to a point where I use the analogy with somebody the other day, where if you walk into Wendy's, the customer service is the best you've ever had. The burgers, the best you've ever tasted. You leave there with a great customer experience. You're not mad that you didn't meet Dave Thomas. Dave right, Thomas right. didn't cook the burger. Dave Thomas didn't ring you up. You know, Dave Thomas didn't even walk to your table to say, hey, how's the burger? Dave Thomas is sitting right. somewhere. All right. So like you don't have to be Dave Thomas, whether that's insurance agent or real estate agent or mortgage broker. If somebody has a five-star experience, 
working with the math and mortgage guy brand, like that's what we're looking to do. Right. Yeah. Which Love speaks it. to how important it is as the business owner to hire right. You got to look for the right people and fill those seats, especially in the places that you don't want to. It's not fun for you. To be continue. Hey, Jason. Yes, Mr. Craig. That was another awesome episode, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, if people want to get a little bit more action and, and learn how to do uh, write 100000 in premium off yes. of even the worst internet leads, where could they go? They can go to live.teledudes.com. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Are we going to be there? Yes. It's a weekly call that we're doing right now that will – it's live – and it will show you the process, the entire process. Mm, Super awesome. Mm, I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sign up right now, live.teledudes.com. Live.teledudes.com. That's live.teledudes.com. Hey, Craig, there's a new community that we are starting that I cannot wait to tell everybody about. It is our live texting community where you and I are going to answer people's questions and give them free content, right? Are you kidding me? We get yep. to talk to them? Yeah, which is awesome, but they have to opt in. They have to text us at 520-214-2219. That's 520-214-2219. Nice. I'm Greg, are you going to respond to these texts? I'm going to respond to them for sure, live. I'm into it too. It's going to be well, awesome. And it's, a, it's going to be our new texting community where we're going to get back to everybody that we can and drop some crazy content, free content, and free um, the calculator that you just came up with. Mm. That's right. The calling calculator. Sales material. I mean, everything for insurance agents, this is it. It's the best texting community out there for insurance agents. Well, what the heck is that number again? I can't remember it. It's 520-214-2219. That's okay. 520-214-2219. I love it. I'm going to text it right now. 520-214-2219. All right. I'll see you later, Mr. Jason. Bye, Mr. Craig. Wait, do they even listen to this on the radio anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Nice. Uh, all right.